Welcome to everyone, and thank you for joining me with this herb walk of the five plants in my yard. We're going to start with Moen. Moen here is a plant that has so many wonderful uses, and you'll notice that Moen leaves are very soft and fuzzy and, and wonderful, amazing. I, I want to tell and start with a story from my own experience and if you have a printed copy of the um, handout that is tied to this video, you'll notice that the third and fourth property says it hydrates cartilage and that it creates a slick lubricated surface on the cartilage to the bone which does amazing ability to help heal joint problems. How many of you have joint challenges? Knees, back, um, shoulders? Yeah, most, most of you. Well, mullen is the first step. So let me tell my own story. I spent 27 years in the Air Force and tw 14 of those 27 years I was in Army-led units which did way too much PT. And we overworked five days a week, uh, seven mile runs, sprinting, and uh, just too much. And I actually damaged one knee severely, tore the cartilage all to pieces, uh, ripped apart uh, the meniscus so that the knee wouldn't stay in place anymore. It just collapsed, the whole knee collapsed and, and stopped working properly, tore both interior ligaments. Well, I was in the Air Force. We had um, all the medical that you could ask for and the, the doctor said, we'll just do surgery, we'll sew up that meniscus, we'll scrape out the rest of the cartilage so that it's not creaking and cracking because it just creak, crack, you could feel it bouncing the entire time. And when they said that, I said no, because I had a belief that the body would heal itself. It just needed the right materials. So I put up with the pain. It was swollen every day and swollen uh, pretty bad every day. <laughs> for eight years, I put up the pain. And for most of that eight years, I was in army-led units where we had to run and we had to be doing things. And I just put up with the pain. The knee wasn't working properly. And then one day, God gave me, through a friend, the book called Dr. Christopher's, uh, it's it, the story of his life by David Christopher, and it's called An Herbal Legacy of Courage. And I read the stories in there and I go, there's my solution. There's the solution to rebuilding my knee. And it was in Dr. Christopher's complete tissue and bone formula and also the calcium formula and I'll uh, mention those a little bit more later also but with complete tissue and bone and calcium and mullen you can rebuild any joint for me five weeks of rebuilding rubbing the ointment on the outside taking the capsules on the inside taking the calcium and I was running five miles pain-free. That was in 1996. Now, 26 years later, something like that, 26 years later, that knee still works perfectly. And here I am in my mid-60s now, and the knee still works perfectly. That's the benefit of repairing things using the natural materials for those repairs and so that with natural materials we've got all the repairs going on properly using natural things. Now the next two properties I want to mention uh, after the cartilage is the narcotic strength pain relief with no side effects and also guiding broken bones into place. And for that, I have to tell a story on myself that ties to my wife. 
Well, I'm not a very good romantic. I'm sorry, that's just me. I, I don't understand romance. But one year, we were living in St. George, um, couldn't get away for Mother's Day, and my wife loves to camp. And so I said, well, I'll just put up the tent in the backyard. It's beautiful outside. It's springtime. Um, we'll just camp outside. And so I surprised her uh, Friday or Saturday evening, don't remember which at this point, and said, we're going to sleep outside tonight. And she came out to look and promptly tripped over one of the lines off the tent because it was dusk. She didn't see it. And she fell and hit her wrist on a piece of uh, the curbing, the sidewalk curbing. And with that bang, with that hit, it actually broke the wrist. Um, solid break, both bones, and then it shattered both tips. Well, we went to the doctor, they pulled it, they reset it, they x-rayed it, and they said, you're gonna have to come back on Monday when we when you can get an appointment with an orthopedic surgeon and see what they've got to do almost certainly they're going to have to um, put pins in that and screw it all together and tie it together and we said well we'll see we'll see because we knew the materials would heal and would would make a difference there so we went home they had given a prescription she told them i'm allergic to opioids uh, I can't take opioids. Guess what they prescribed? Yeah, you're right, opioids. And we didn't fill the prescription. About one o'clock at night, well after midnight at least I remember, she was still awake. The pain was too high and she says, I've got to do something. I can't sleep at all. Um, I guess we've got to fill this prescription. So we went, got the prescription filled in the middle of the night. She took one capsule and vomiting in the bathroom was immediate. And we knew that wasn't gonna work because it didn't relieve the pain and all it did is make her sick. So we're both awake. We're both searching through the herb books now, trying to find anything. And there's one reference my wife found that says, Mullen is a narcotic strength pain reliever with no side effects. I'm a master herbalist. We went, grabbed some mullen out of the cupboard. She made a cup of tea, strained it. You strain it, those little teeny fibers on mullen um, need to be strained out or they'll irritate the throat. So strain it through cloth or paper or a uh, French press is fine enough to strain those out also. Anyway, she took a cup of tea Less than a minute later, she felt the relief coming and she was asleep in 15 minutes. And she managed the pain all the way through that process with Moen and using bone, flesh, and cartilage, the complete tissue and bone formula, and also using the herbal calcium and Dr. Christopher's Jurassic Green formula for its lots of green building materials. We'll talk later about comfrey and how it sped that healing process. Comfrey is in both the calcium formula, calc T as a T form, and comfrey is also in the B, F, and C, bone, flesh, and cartilage formula, if you take it as a um, full and make your own either capsules or make your own tea or, or soak it in it. So her healing went very, very rapidly. And interestingly, that broken wrist that she had broke twice before healed with full mobility this time because she had all the uh, materials for it to heal. And so she could actually turn it, use it, full movement on that wrist that hadn't been available to use prior to that time. While we're at the Mullen, I want to get a little closer and just show you the little yellow flowers there that are on the top, because we're going to talk about those uh, in a story in just a moment. And you'll notice we transition because we missed these first few minutes 
in the class that was held and I had to re uh, do this portion and so we'll pick up from at the class please pardon the wind and I'll translate as much as I can the comments from people that are hard to hear I have to tell the earache one as a story though or at least enough kids have had earaches raise your hand uh, okay instant solution and instant relief would you like to know that one you can see these little yellow flowers up here that the ants are loving pick the yellow flowers drop them in olive oil I let them dry for a day before I drop them in the olive oil let the moisture clear off drop them in olive oil that transfer of properties from the mullein flowers to the olive oil is antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal, and many other things. And it's extremely pain relieving. So a few drops of that oil in the ear kills the infection and what else does it do? Stops the pain immediately. So for earaches, this is so powerful these little yellow flowers my wife thought she'd be creative and i'll i'll mention this at the very top of that it has mullein the uh, botanical name and then flowers leaves seeds and root are all medicinal and edible if you want to just pick one of those flowers and chew on it it's completely edible and it tastes pretty good i've eaten them so you're welcome to just grab one as we move as as long as you filter it good and put it in the refrigerator, it'll last several years. Yes. Oh, filter it good as in it takes the flowers back out of it again. Oh, filter the flowers okay. out. How long are the flowers for? Um better look that up. Okay. I remember a couple of weeks, but yeah. I it's been a while since I've done it. I, I was just wondering how many flowers to how much olive oil. I Standard for most of these things is start with a small jar, fill it two thirds full of the product, in this case flowers, fill it clear full of olive oil. And then put it out in the sun or put it in some place so that it can transfer with a little heat. We use our dehydrator because we can set it at 115. Don't run it in things that get a higher than 130 or 150 because it'll just kill the properties. Now on the tea, didn't you tell us once that it's the first year? Yeah, um, not yellow, but mullein. Both the of best? them are effective. Okay. You could pick any leaf from any of these plants, and it would be fine. Okay. And I could, we could dehydrate that, right? The leaf, yes. That's, okay. And in fact, that's a really good. These were some plants that were second years, but I wanted to pull them out of my carrot and onion bed, which is where. I don't know how many of you might have noticed there's a bunch of mullen plants at the end of the driveway that are going to walk home with you tonight when you leave. And these were ones I wasn't going to transplant because they were second year and starting to put up a flower top. And so I just hung them. You can just hang them and let them dry this way. Do wash them because the dust catches in them real bad. And they'll dry just hanging up in a week. The tea is really mild. It's a very mild yeah, taste. Yeah, and I don't typically put anything in the tea. Just drink it the way it is. And it immediately relieves pain. So that's the reason that was there, is just to say, oh, it's already starting to dry. So on your, do you pull your second year um, plant before they flower? Is that what you're saying? Not typically. Okay. Those were just in the wrong place. Okay, okay. Uh, so do they keep, do they die every year or do they keep growing? This is a two year, a, a biennial plant. Okay. And so first year it looks like this. Second year, it comes back up from the root and throws a stalk up with flowers and seeds. The seeds are rumored to be poisonous, false. <laughs> because they're so strong, people were using them for fishing. They throw a bunch of seeds in the pond the 
calming properties would have the fish up on the top of the water. They'd just scoop them off the top and they said, oh, it's poisonous. <laughs> no, they're not poisonous. They're just very, very powerful. And so we actually made a tincture with the flowers, the roots, and the seeds. And you talk about a powerful antibiotic, antiviral, antifungal tincture. Uh, where did the other handout get to? You got them? The, the one with... I, I've got one here. Yes, the one with the blue on it. Most of you have seen... I've got one. If, if everyone's got one, I want you to tell me what is mullein? Do you see the line there? That, it's or everything. the color, it's, it's, it's banded. Mullen is? All three, yes. Antibiotic, antiviral, and antifungal. All three. So when there's a cold or a flu, I typically turn to mullen or one of the other common ones on this list and knock it out within 24 hours. That's a different discussion, but mullen is very good for that too. But with your cold... Oh. Uh, it'll still look like this, and to be plain, you can cut it all the way down. If you harvest the leaves now and don't need the seed to go to seed, you can take all those leaves off and dry it and keep it. This will, the flower, let, these were just transplanted, they're real small, otherwise they'd be out this big. <laughs> um, How long does it take to grow that size? This is second year, and it, it was that big this spring, and in two months it jumped to this big. So will you chop it then because it's done? It's done, and I'm going to dig the root because the root actually is very medicinal also on the second year plants. Do they just reseed themselves then with the seeds? There's a million little black seeds in here. If I'd thought about it, I should have pulled um, seeds out because I've got millions and millions of seeds. If you really want to plant, take some plant uh, transplant, and if you need more, I've got seeds galore. And what have you done to amend your soil to get all this to grow? Uh, this is totally garbage soil. Yeah. And all we did is throw some flower seed in it. Because I've been trying to do the, is it the Indian? Um, and I, I've got little ones and I haven't got any yet. I've dug holes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it just takes a while. <laughs> With, with all of its wonderful properties, is it somewhat immune to, okay, let's say it's growing near a golf course where there's a lot of spray. I presume you'd avoid that? Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, this property has never had any herbicide or pesticide on it. We built on it and it was a completely, a um, just grass, wild garbage grass um, when we moved in. So I know it's never had any spray on it. And I wouldn't want to eat something that had been sprayed because it actually does absorb it. But mm -hmm. yeah, it will continue to grow. The first few plants that came down here were about five years ago. We went up to Pine Valley and picked some little teeny scrawny ones that were only about as big as that one there and transplanted them. And everything else on the property is after those few scrawny ones from dried so out. these ones are all from your seeds then? Right? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, just enough to try and retain some moisture. Uh, I just stay in far enough with anything I want to eat because I know that the spray does move over the walls, <laughs> over the sides. Okay. Great question. Is there is there any risk in um, respiratory like slowing like there would be with no narcotics if someone's drinking this as a tea? No, no it doesn't. They can't no. OD on there are, it. Or that's the amazing thing here is there's no side effects, no negative side effects at all uh, with Mullen. Um, pain relief. I've got to tell one more story because. I won't ask the question, but we had a couple of people who were addicted to opioids. Opioids are very addictive and have a ton of negative side effects, which I won't mention right now. 
but a couple of ladies wanted to get off the opioids. How do you do it? Mm. Mullen. Replace the opioid one uh, mm -hmm. dose at a time with Mullen. It kills the pain, but it's also got, if you see the last, um, let's see, nutritive. Last line lists nutritive. It is extremely nutritive also. So um, quick last story on Mullen and we'll move on. There's a lot of other stories I could tell. My brother-in-law was in pretty bad shape. Had open heart surgery. His wound was not healing. He had a, a horrible wound, middle of his chest that was not healing at all. And opioids for him made him very aggressive. He was hitting nurses. He was obstinate. He was not a nice patient to have in the hospital either. He finally made it home after months in the hospital, not healing at all. And on heavy, heavy opioid narcotic pain relief and I said just try Mullen six months into it not healing he finally says okay I'll try it immediately the wound started healing and he stopped having the, the challenges with the opioids so it's an extremely effective pain reliever and it helps the healing process move very very quickly Well, Mullen, I do as a single because it's so effective as a single. Most of the Dr. Christopher's things I actually do use as formulas, but this one I actually use as a single because so it's. What, what, kind of, what brand, what, what would it be called? Uh, he, he has it in bulk. Any of the organic Mullins online in bulk work. And there, are they calcium? You can get it in pill and you can get it in um, just bulk for tea. The reason I grew it during our last shutdown time, it disappeared entirely. I couldn't buy it. And I was giving it away to clients coming, come on, find find it in my yard. <laughs> where did you buy it? Where did you purchase your original seeds? Uh, I went to Pine Valley. We just oh, dug it up and transferred there. it, yeah. Oh, so it is a wild yes. a wild plant. Here. Some some states refer to it as an obnoxious weed. It's easy to pull out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these pull, look at the root system. I have on a them. feeling we have this in our backyard. Yeah, they pull so easy, it's not hard to pull them out. <laughs> if so many you know, it's, no, it's, it's, it's kind of. When we lived in yeah. St. George, as long as the plot is getting enough water and it's got some good organic matter in it, it grows like crazy. I had things that were bigger than this in St. George. One last story, this is brand new to me. It's not listed in the um, properties of it at all. My father-in-law, his nurse, now you think nurse, you think medical, right? She wants to be natural in every way. And when she was raising her children, her mother-in-law knew herbs. Her daughter got burned horribly. Third degree burns. Her mother-in-law said, take Mullen, make a tea, put, drink the tea and put the leaves that have, you've made the tea on the burn after it's cooled off. Three days, it went from third degree burn to just barely pink. It is so nutritive. It's just an amazing plant. That's why I wanted to start with it. If we had time for nothing else, Mullen is worth having in the yard. Now, we're right in front of Yarrow. I'm going to switch topics. Any questions on Mullen properties before we jump? Is it true the toothache? Um, <clears throat> toothaches have a different cause. You will knock out some of the pain with it. But typically with a toothache, I look for first, is it fungal? viral or bacterial and then use three or four that are in that class that are in that category to find out what the what the actual issue is i want to switch to yarrow you put them out here there's enough ants back on that board because <laughs> it's so easy to transfer 
This is yarrow. I just dug a few just before we met because I wanted to show you what yarrow looks like. And I'm just going to pass a, a bundle each direction and grab one of the individuals. Um, start with in the middle. And then, yeah, pass it to that way. Look at, look at how yarrow, um, yarrow looks at the root system. Small, small root system, white flowers, and then it throws these runners out that make more. Now this was in my grass. I decided in the back lawn, I really didn't need yarrow in the back lawn. But has anyone used yarrow before? Anybody? It smells like, like alyssum. Yarrow was kind of new to me, and its properties are amazing. So, and, and we'll keep it to just one major property. See this fern like? Go ahead and pick a flower and chew on it. This is all edible. <laughs> and the leaf. Just taste it. It won't hurt you. Um, but the yarrow flower, that white flower, is, is just so easy to... Now, looking at it, what's it usable for? Any ideas? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> kind of a strange little plant. But if you have, for example, you're out in the woods, you get cut seriously, pull a leaf off, chew it, and put it on the cut. It will stop the bleeding immediately. It's very styptic. You can probably taste that when you taste it. It's quite styptic. <laughs> it, it is also a cardiovascular balancer. Lower blood pressure, some of those kinds of things. The, the property that I knew it for first is if you'll look at Yarrow's list of properties, you will notice that it's got antibiotic, antiviral, and anodyne, so pain relieving, anodyne, antibiotic and antiviral. And there we are, antiseptic. Yes. Did you chew some of that? <laughs> yeah, and it will stop the pain in a dental, a toothache, yes. Now, it comes in pink, too. The white one and the pink one are the medicinal ones. There are some blues and so forth, too. They're not as medicinal. So why do you keep the book here? Yeah. Um, the one property I've used it most for. Colder flu, severe fever. Take a cup of tea with the flowers and leaves, and simply put in a hot bath, drink it. It's going to open up your sweat pores, dump out all the toxins. You're going to go to bed and wake up the next morning completely well. That's probably the property I've used to get the most for. And it, it will spread by the two different properties. Thank you. That was the other question and the reason why the bundles, like that one, all you got to do, if you're going to dry it, cut off the top third of the plant with the flower, just wrap it and hang it and let it dry. It'll dry in a couple of weeks. Take the 
high off of and I use a different color than the glass so I can it. And then uh, you can powder it. And that powder will work as tea, or you can just leave it as leaves and, and cure it as a tea that way. It's extremely effective as a coffee uh, lady. That's it for these two areas. Let's move on to the sidewalk. The other three plants are in there. It keeps getting worse from the side. done it before just grab a cheese it off there and eat it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the little seed. <laughs> what are they? This is marshmallow plant. Yeah, thank you. If you look at the leaf, this one is similar. It's in the same family. This is the full size marshmallow. And that's this plant right here. This is what's in your yard. They're both medicinal. And the root. <laughs> and, and those flowers. Are, those flowers are edible too. This is a root I dug just a week ago and let it dry off of this kind of plant. That root gets full inch or two around and three or four feet long. We dug about 20 of them last year and dried it and powdered them because they're so powerful. Now, what is the marshmallow's main property? It's like a real marshmallow? Uh, it's, I don't, the reason it was called marshmallow, or the reason we eat marshmallows called marshmallows, they actually made them out of the roots from this plant, or from this plant. So are these two different kinds? They're in the same family, but they have the same medicinal properties. This is the wild one. Do you have one that's still in the ground? What is the Do you have one that's still in the ground? Oh, tons. Tons and tons. Can they seed up with a uh, sharp seed? No. Uh, no, they're still... It just turns into a bunch of little seeds that are in that, in that group. Yeah. If you think calming, that would be probably the first property I'd say. If you read the properties, it says demulcent and emollient. Demulcent is calming to tissue <laughs> internally and emollient externally, or vice versa, if I've got those backwards. But it's very calming to tissue. So you can take the root, powdered marshmallow root, and calm any tissue down. <laughs> well, I'll back up a little bit. How about if we come over that way? That yeah, let's wrap around this way. Okay. Uh, but before we do, I'll just grab a, a leaf off this when I need to. That is comfy right in front of you there. Yeah. Comfy. 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 We'll be to that in a minute. Oh, okay. So, marshmallow, the one product of Dr. Christopher's that it says it's calming factor, it's called immune calm. And the immune system is balanced by astragalus and calmed down by the marshmallow. Astragalus and marshmallow are the only two things in immune calm. So they're different. Astragalus, astragalus is different and marshmallow. Yeah. But they both calm. Yes. Astragalus will bring the immune system up or down depending on what's needed. And marshmallow calms the tissue. And so if you've got allergies or something like that, Dr. Christopher's immune calm uses 
this plant to calm that down. Wherever that's at, those flowers are also edible. And, and they're the, yummy. And the seeds are edible. So to use that, it's the root that you use, though. Uh, well, thank you for that perfect the root. The root, like you would powder. How do you, you dry it? You dry it and powder it. But the top of this is all edible. The flowers are edible, the seeds are edible, and the leaf is completely edible. It's kind of like a strong spinach. We've used it before and we're going, oh boy, that's a strong spinach. <laughs> it's better cooked than it is raw, but it's, it's very, very calming. Let me see if I've got any other notes. You'll notice it says, you can use it for a dry cough. Um, that plant right there. With the pink flowers? Yeah, the pink flowers. Same family, same medicinal properties, and the flowers are edible. Hollyhock. Is that right? Yeah. I got the wrong name in here. I was thinking about something else as I was typing this. Hollyhocks, same family, same properties. Hollyhocks are prettier. Marshmallow. So if you've got a pen, change that. Um, all right. I want to talk about comfrey. Who's watching the time for me? It's 10 after 7. Okay. We have 20 minutes. I want to leave some time for um, questions. I want to talk about comfrey then. So I'm just going to grab it. That is comfrey leaf. And that goes very, really very spiky. This is a good composting yeah. too. Oh, yeah. It's a really good Humphrey composting. Comfrey flowers, purple. Comfrey yeah, leaf feels kind of <laughs> yeah, fuzzy, but also a little bit prickly. Comfrey, the biggest property of comfrey that I knew it by is cell <coughs> proliferant. It speeds healing dramatically like about four to six times faster. Quick story, uh, seven years ago roughly, if I got my timing right, I was up acting like a teenager, 20 foot up in a tree, shaking pecans down out of the country in St. George. In the winter, how many of you have pecan trees or have had? Anybody? They get brittle in the winter, don't they? I didn't know that, I'd never been where pecans grew before. And so I'm up, my feet are on a branch, 20 foot up, my hands are holding on, so the branch my feet are on is this big, the branch my hands are on is full hand width, and I'm just going, okay, I'm getting tired. I've been up there about a half hour. I was ready to climb down, the tree says, I'm ready too, and it dropped both branches at the exact same time, just let go of them, and I went down 20 feet. Three broken ribs, four breaks in the pelvis, broken hip, um, broken collarbone, and broken butterfly sacra. So, nine, ten breaks in one fall. Internal bleeding, that's a different story. What do you take for internal bleeding? Someone scream it out. Cayenne, thank you. But here I am with nine breaks. And I really, really don't like missing work. So, I went in, found out what the brakes were. None of them were helped by anything. And I just simply went home. I was in a wheelchair for two days because there was so much swelling with four brakes in the pelvis. <laughs> but two days later, Got out of the wheelchair, walker for four or five more days, maybe a week and a half. I was taking comfrey in two different forms, and the healing went super fast. 
So how do you take comfrey? Tea or powdered or what? You can throw comfrey leaves in a green drink. I, it's in Dr. Christopher's calcium tea formula and in Dr. Christopher's B, F, and C formula, which is the complete tissue and bone formula. There's a dog next to me. Yes, there is. <laughs> and so there's comfrey in both those, and I was taking both of them, along with several other things, Molin for the pain, and, and it was three weeks. The ribs had completely healed. The pelvic breaks had completely healed in three weeks. The last one to heal was the hip fracture because that's such a large joint. But that was done in six weeks. I met other people while I had the broken ribs who were six months into their healing process of broken ribs and still in pain. I never had any pain that was beyond handling because Mullen was taking care of the pain. The other thing that pain tells you is materials are needed. It's just a simple guide. Materials are needed. Give me more materials. And so anytime you feel pain and you know what to take, come in. Take another cup of tea. Take more capsules. Take more of the, the herbs. You don't sit there in pain if you know that you are having pain. Just take more in. Can you dehydrate that? Yeah, okay. um, this is a good stage to pick the leaves. The flowers, actually the one that I passed around, the flowers still on it. It's better to pick it when there's flowers on it like that one. Um, but we're trying to let it spread right now because comfrey took a while to get moving in this yard. Fred, I have a different variety. Does it matter, comfrey, which uh, variety? There's a bunch of different varieties and they all, they all have the same properties. Comfrey root is also used. I want to point out to you that if you scan the five things we're talking about today, just those five, all of them have one property that's the same. Looking through, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you scan and find that one property that's the same. There's a lot of properties on them, that, um, and they're not, all, they're not all on your antibiotic list, so it's not one of those. Oh, okay. Vulnery. Anybody know what vulnerary means? You're vulnerable. <laughs> Wound healing. Oh. Wound healing. So yeah, there we you are. You make a poultice out of that, right? You make a poultice. Yes. yes. And all of these five plants today are wound healing. So it's worth having all of them growing in the yard. One more plant. Then we're going to answer a few questions and we're about done with our hour and we're going to slip into a quick look at the greenhouse for those that want to look at it. Any interaction between any of these, if you took all of them at once, would there be any interaction with I love that question. These are plants. When I did my master's in herbal studies, they gave us a big book that says counteractions, things to watch out for, with pharmaceutical drugs and plants. But interestingly, there's almost no interaction between plants because God made us to eat salads. <laughs> and I'm taking, on a daily basis, rebuilding with probably close to 50 plants right now in combinations that are made to heal the thyroid, heal the brain, heal and so forth. So thank you for that question. No interactions, no negative interactions between most plants. There are a few you can take too much of. What's the plant we kiss underneath of at Christmas? This is mistletoe. Mistletoe, you can get too much mistletoe. Probably like you can get too much kissing. <laughs> but mistletoe is a nerve calmer, nerve rebuilder, and it actually, you can get too much. It'll calm you down too far. But in the formulas, formulated by a, an herbalist, no challenge. So is there any other cautions like um, for ages, for kids, um, pregnant, anything like that? There's a few of them that say unknown on the pregnancy sites that caution against using it. 
most of the time, I, uh, how do I use them? I teach every individual to learn how to listen to their body with muscle testing. And you just ask your body, is this one going to hurt me during pregnancy or, or children? So with muscle testing, you can find out exactly what your body needs at whatever stage of life you're at. One last plant. It's called plantain, and it's a weed in lawns. And I'm just going to see if I can pull one. Let me see if I can pull one. See this narrow leaf? Pick a narrow leaf or two here. I'm probably going to put this back in the ground and hope it takes off again. Um, this is the narrow leaf plantain, and and this and it's time to go to seed. So these seeds actually are about ready to harvest. Plantain. Who knows what it's used for? Ant bites. Ant bites. Yes, absolutely. I have teenagers to help me work on the yard in the morning. And last year, the young lady, 13 years old, got a bee sting on her way to my property. She told me about it. I said, take a leaf, chew it up, and put it on that bee sting. She did. She never said another word about it. At the end of the hour, I asked her, how's the bee sting doing? Oh, I forgot about it. It doesn't hurt. Pulls the poison out. That's probably the first property on plantain. It pulls the poison out. Yeah, please touch, taste, smell, chew it. If you haven't got familiar with it, take a bite of it. Do something so you can get enough familiarity with it so you know what it's doing. Because each one of these, if you're familiar with what it does, it's going to benefit you. My master was required that we make something with it every time and we taste it and we smell it. Then your body has the signature in it and when you need it again, it asks for it. It says, I need that. So a story on plantain and the body asking for what it needed. Talking about bee stings. Last year or the year before, I don't remember which, I got nine bee stings all at once. I was working on the hive. My suit had a tear in it that I didn't know about, and they found it, and they came in and were chewing me apart. And I knew plantain pulled the poison out, and I put plantain all over my hand, I had most of the, the stings on one hand. I put plantain all over that hand. It pulled most of the poison out of the hand. It was pulling up really, really fast. And I knew that tincture of lobelia is a poi anti poison. I tried that, wasn't doing enough. So with muscle testing, I just went through other herbs because I didn't know of any others that would counteract the poison. Guess which one I found? I'd never read that it was anti-poison before this. What's this plant right here? Purple cone, echinacea. Echinacea, cone flower, whatever name you want to give it. Anti-poison. One of its many properties is anti-poison. And it did. It was wonderful. It solved the... What did you eat? The leaf or the... I actually took it as a tincture. Okay. Oh, and okay. It's, a, it's a root. Oh, the root, root texture, okay. but it's mm. anti-poison, and it worked wonderfully to solve that very overload of toxins in my body, because I was so tired for a couple of days with that many mm -hmm. bee stings. Snake bites? It, it says snake uh, anti-venomous as one of its properties. So how do you do the root? Can you make a tincture yourself? Mm -hmm. So can you make that tincture yourself? How do you do that for that? Or can you? 
No, yeah. it's the root, he said. Oh. Yeah, for, for this one, it's the root. And I dry the root, powder it, or just cut it and put it in alcohol. It's an alcohol tincture. It's worth learning and just experimenting. The beautiful thing about plants is you cannot make a mistake. Um, echinacea root is medicinal. It's very strong. So, it, and there are other plants in here. There's labels on them if you walk around it just to see what the plants are. What's the label in front of that one? Catnip and lemon balm, I think. Lemon balm on that one. Like the alcohol you use is like Everclear uh -huh. or um, Grey Goose, something like that. Yeah. Hunter proof. Yeah. Yeah. So while we're not alcohol drinkers, we usually have a couple of quarts of alcohol in tincture form <laughs> going. I'll go for it. All right. That's it for the five plants. I don't dare tell any more stories. I've got more, but I don't dare tell any more. Questions on those plants? Okay, um, I would chew it and then put it on because it actually pulls out the poison. Yeah, for blood poisoning, like a rusty nail or something like that, chew it enough to break it down, put it on the, the point wherever that rusty nail hit you or that snake bit you, and it'll pull the poison back out again. Fred, was that the echinacea or the uh, plantain? Plantain is the... Poison polar. Plantain is a good dry or does it need to be fresh in order for It'll work both. In fact, Dr. Christopher's makes a plantain ointment that's just plantain and olive oil and a little bit of beeswax. What about I I would use it on the Okay, shingles is a neurological caused by what virus? Herpes zoster virus, yeah, the herpes. So there's a plant called skull cap. And Dr. Crispers includes it in his relaxes formula, which also rebuilds the nerves that have been attacked. But that skull cap kills the herpes virus where it hides in the spinal fluid. Uh, it's actually internal. Take it internally so it can go internally and kill kill it inside. It'll kill the virus inside. And I usually take skullcap alone and relax these and a few other nerve beans to rebuild the nerves that have been so attacked.